Let's work now on some of the practical implications of the leader-manager distinction. First principle, both leadership and management are legitimate and necessary. Management is about coping with complexity. Without good management, complex organizations, as today's churches and Christian ministry organizations have become, tend to degenerate into chaos in ways that threaten their very existence. Good management brings order and consistency to the overall flow of life and activity in the organization. Consequently, we must have good management. Leadership, on the other hand, is about coping with change. And a church or Christian organization that is truly alive in the purposes of God will be constantly growing and maturing and therefore changing. In a military analogy, a peacetime army can usually survive with good management and administration throughout the organization, coupled with a few good leaders right at the very top. But an army that is at war needs competent leadership at every level. No one has yet determined how to manage people effectively into battle. They must be led. The church is in a continual war. Consequently, we must have good leadership. Leaders establish the right and powerful vision of the future. Managers keep things going smoothly while we are getting there. Leaders need managers, or else they will never get where they want to go. And managers need leaders, or else they will often not know where to go. Therefore, one is not superior to the other. Next principle. Leaders and managers must respect one another and learn to work together. They should complement each other and not compete. Today's managers have been done a great disservice by contemporary leadership literature that implies or even states that leadership is cool, glamorous, mysterious, and exotic, while management is boring, mundane, and tedious. Or, leadership is the province of a chosen few who possess charisma or other mystical personal traits, while managers, ah, they're just a dime a dozen. Or, Leadership changes the world, but management is just like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. In reality, we must have both leaders and managers or else we will fail. Look at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Managers sometimes accuse leaders of being out of touch or out of control or living in a dream world. And leaders sometimes accuse managers of going nowhere and wasting everyone's time and energy with trifling details. But the reality is they need each other. Leaders and managers must learn to work together as a team, with each contributing their unique perspectives and strengths. While most organizations and churches are overmanaged and underled, it should be remembered that strong leadership with weak management is no better and is sometimes worse than the reverse. Some people who are very strong in leadership abilities, such as change and innovation and vision casting, lack the ability or the desire to focus on tasks related to effective management. Preferring big picture activities to routine work, they may invest little of their time and attention in designing effective systems of administration, establishing standards, policies, and procedures, or structuring roles and responsibilities. In addition, their informal, impulsive style may frequently disrupt the ongoing legitimate activities of the organization. Happens all the time with strong leaders. So the real challenge is to combine strong management and strong leadership and allow each to balance the other. 
Effective top leadership teams understand and value both kinds of people and work hard to make each of them an integral part of the team. Otherwise, chaos will result in the loosely structured organization that is commonly associated with the strong leader. Next principle. Everyone needs both orientations to some degree. Very few people are entirely one or the other. You should understand your strengths and weaknesses. Then you should function primarily according to your strengths while, of course, working to strengthen your weaknesses. Additionally, you should populate your team according to your weaknesses. Some leaders make the terrible mistake of staffing their team with people who are just like themselves. Now they get along well. But the wise leader will surround himself with people whose strengths make up for his own weaknesses. Next principle, leader managers are very valuable. People with a leader manager orientation are able to function well in both worlds. It is obviously important that all three ovals receive attention. We need a vision, a strategy, and tactical details to be provided by leaders, leader managers, and managers, respectively. Leaders provide vision. Leader managers provide strategy. Managers provide tactical details. Also, an effective leader manager is able to produce powerful synergies between the two roles. In balancing the big picture and long-term vision with the demands of the present operations, the leader manager is able to maintain order. Then, the leader manager works with the development of both the people and the needs of the organization so that effective decisions regarding alignment can be made. By both inspiring and directing people, the leader manager contributes to the organization's success. Finally, through his personal makeup that balances flexibility and an ability to work with ambiguity on the one hand and managerial clarity on the other, the leader manager is able to bring unity to the organization, building bridges between the visionaries and the administrators, the big picture and the fine details.